This $10 NFL parlay for week 11 could make you guys a thousand dollars. Yeah, we're gonna do just that. It's Austin joined by Logan. Well, I know you guys have been missing this video. Logan and I were both super busy. Our schedules never aligned where we could record at the same time, but we're back with a vengeance. It just means I think we're due, Logan. That's all I know. I think we're due. We're smacking this weekend. If you are new, do us a favor, go down below and hit that subscribe button for us all. Like we always do, we are going to be on DraftKings today. If you want to try to tail it on FanDuel, you probably can. Same for other books, but DraftKings, they have a great offer for you guys. $200 in bonus bets, plus a no sweat same game parlay for every day of the NFL season. So take advantage of that. All details down below. We really like the odds we're getting on DraftKings, so we'll do it there. Of course, if you want to tail us, you can tail us on any book you want, but sign up for DraftKings to help support the channel if you use those links. But Logan, I'm going to dive in first to mine. I got five legs to involve the same exact player. I'm just going to dive right in. We're going to try to hit one of these. We have been super close this season. I feel good about this one. Then I got cooked up $10 to win a thousand. Let's talk for the first guy. Amon Ross St. Brown, 100 plus receiving yards of the Detroit Lions. Look, I don't really know how far I have to go into depth about Amonra St. Brown. If you've been watching the Lions or you're in fantasy football and you have him, your team's probably pretty good because he's been super good this season. 100 plus yards, four straight games in and six of eight this season. Look, he's just he's just been a beast at back at home. There's no weather concerns here because they play in a dome. And we see this is a terrific matchup against the Bears who allow the fewest rushing yards per attempt in the NFL. But they're not that the same uh, defense against the air. They play a lot of cover two. We're going to see Amonra St. Brown just absolutely destroy cover two defenses. And this guy, great connection with Jared Goff. We saw last year versus Chicago, he had a game with 10 receptions and 119 yards. His brother's on the other sideline. So uh, there's a little bit of brotherly competition here. Amonra St. Brown, 100 plus receiving yards. He could get that in the first half, maybe the full game. I don't care how he gets it done. He's just been so good. We'll roll with him. Now, my second guy. If you couldn't find a guy better than Amonra St. Brown, this guy might be on that list of better than him because it's Tyreek Hill to get 100 plus receiving yards plus 125 on its own. Uh, how much analysis do I need to do on Tyree Kill? I mean, this guy's been super good, 100-plus receiving yards in five of nine games this season. He has yet to go back-to-back -back games without 100-plus, and he did not get 100-plus in their last game against the Chiefs in Germany. He's back at home in Miami, where this season, Tyreek Hill has 100-plus receiving yards in every single Miami game. He's 4 for 4 to the line. Look, facing the Raiders, they won't have an answer for him on Sunday. I really like Tyreek Hill to get 100-plus receiving yards. We know how talented this guy is. That should be a walk in the park. Now, my third leg is going to be another guy, a different position, but getting receiving yards himself. It's Christian McCaffrey, 50-plus receiving yards, plus 230 on his own. Now, I consider taking his regular receiving yards prop, but I really just go up to 50-plus. It's a guy we know how talented he is on the ground. And this is a tough matchup against the Buccaneers in terms of running the football. We see a lot of teams just kind of opt to throw in the ball, which is why a lot of people probably will be on Brock Purdy's receiving or passing yards. But one of his favorite weapons is Christian McCaffrey out of the backfield. And we've seen McCaffrey play against the Bucs plenty of times in his career, played pretty well against them in these last three games. Six, uh, 51, 64, and then 47 receiving yards. So going over the 50 plus and two of the last three, look, Brock Purdy steps back if he gets any sort of pressure on him which the Bucs certainly can do with their you know, blitzing scheme with Todd Bowles. I certainly think CMC will get those targets out of the backfield. He might make one guy miss, and boom, he's down the field for 25-plus receiving yards. I love him. I think he certainly can get 50-plus. And my fourth and fifth leg involve another running back, same guy, Austin Eckler. To get two things. He needs 80-plus rushing yards and a touchdown. Now, the touchdown can come in the air or on the ground. I don't care how he gets it done, but... It was like plus 450 on its own. I think Eckler's in for a massive day against the Packers. Spoiler alert, Logan has a pick on the other side for his long shot parlay. But you look at last week versus Detroit, a very stout rushing defense. Eckler, 19 carries, only at 69 yards in that one. But look, if you tell me Eckler gets 15, heck, even 19 carries in this game, he's going to crush it. And this was that was a negative game script where they were down early to the Lions, like 24 to 7 pretty quickly. They ended up marching back in that game. But still, down early, you look at this Packers defense, not as good is that Lions defensive line. Last week, you saw the Steelers, which offensive line is always questionable. They had not only Jalen Warren, the backup, Najee Harris, both ran for 80 plus yards, and each of them had a touchdown against the Packers defensive line. Look, they just have not been good at stopping the run. And while we do know the Chargers, I know they want to throw the football, then they get back to running the football. You need to have a little bit more of a balanced attack. And I think the Chargers are realizing that, hence the 19 rush attempts for Eckler last year or last week. I think this is a game where they try to run the football a lot for him. 80 plus rushing yards for a starting running back that could see almost 20 carries. I'll take a stab at it. And we know how good at scoring touchdowns Eckler is. He's, I mean, what do you have, 20 touchdowns last season? I'm confident there. So, boom, my whole parlay 
I know it's crazy, but we just have to hit one of these and we're going to be profitable this season. I really like it. Trust in all guys that are really good and we know are going to get the rock a ton of times on Sunday. So $10 turns into a thousand in a one thousand and fifty cents. I think that is a winner. If you want to tell me it's on DraftKings, sign up with the top link in the description. But Logan, I'm happy to have you back on the long shot videos. I spoiled uh, one game that you are in, but I'll let you tackle your whole parlay. Where are you going on Sunday? Yeah, for my first leg, I'm going to I'm going to my Carolina Panthers, and they're taking on the Dallas Cowboys as massive underdogs. And I'm taking C.D. Lamb of the Cowboys uh, to get 100 plus receiving yards, plus 150 odds on this one individually. The chemistry between Dak and C.D. Lamb is at an all time high. Wait, we're not going to ignore that at all. Lamb has 100 plus receiving yards in four straight games. I'll tell you right now, as a Panthers fan, this team's really hard to watch, and Carolina's secondary is straight garbage. I don't know how Lamb doesn't have his way unless, you know, this is just an absolute blowout and they don't need to throw, but the Dallas Cowboys are one of those teams to still run it up uh, against inferior opponents. I think C.D. Lamb and, and Dak, uh, for that matter, do have a big day. I think 100-plus receiving yards, definitely capable of doing that. Now let's go to our second leg, another wide receiver. I'm taking Marquise Hollywood Brown of the Cardinals, 70-plus receiving yards, plus 140 odds. On this one individually you look at you look at his normal line this is obviously an alt line but his normal line went up to 56 and a half even though he went under that line in five straight games so the books are kind of telling you this this game could be you know more of an offensive shootout and i definitely think marquise brown is in line for a big day the texans will focus on on stopping mcbride mcbride is is the one that gets all the attention on this cardinals offense but let me tell you right now marquise brown runs a ton of routes he runs a lot of deep routes and all it takes is a couple catches for an explosive player like Hollywood Brown that's good after the catch, and he's also good at you know getting those 40, 50 yard type receptions. It's what he does. And I think, uh, you know, obviously another week with Kyler will definitely help the chemistry there. Now let's go to a third receiver. And, th and this guy we've all heard of, Stephon Diggs of the Bills, 100 plus receiving yards, plus 200 odds on this one individually. Now Diggs has a, had 100 plus yards in four out of his first five games. Since then, he's he's been kind of, you know, quiet right this this bills offense and this bills team and in general is kind of reeling in a crucial divisional matchup versus the jets i think josh allen is going to look for his most trusted wide receiver in stefan diggs they can't mess around against the jets simply simply put in week one uh stefan diggs had 102 yards on 10 catches against the jets the the way the jets secondary works obviously sauce gardner is a good matchup but they move him around. They move Stephon Diggs around. Uh, Gardner won't guard Stephon Diggs the whole entire game, and, and he'll still, uh, you know, find find those short and intermediate passes. I think 100 plus yards is definitely uh, doable for a guy like Stephon Diggs. Now let's go to the fourth leg. Austin kind of mentioned this game a little bit in his analysis. Taking Jordan Love of the Packers, 225 plus passing yards. Minus 130 odds on this one individually. Now, if you look at his normal line, it's just a few yards high, a little bit higher than this. But Love has hit this mark in three straight games. I think Jordan Love is, you know, he's not, he, it's not pretty. It doesn't come pretty at all. He might only have like 80 or 100 yards by halftime. And you might be like, oh, come on. We, we need a lot more, Love. But this offense finally starts to be clicking with the short and intermediate passes for Jordan Love. I think they finally realize what his strengths are. His strengths are not throwing the ball deep at all he's he's got terrible accuracy deep i think you know the way you get to 225 yards is you got to dink and dunk your way i think that's what they they do against this this charger secondary that doesn't really scare me at all if the packers also are trailing as they usually do they'll have to abandon the run game they'll have to you know abandon uh, the, what they want to do i'm sure the packers would rather be a running team but we've seen a lot this year jordan love has to drop back a lot and I think 225 uh, plus passing yards is definitely doable for him. Now let's go to the last two legs. And I say two legs because it's the same player. The fifth and sixth leg of this parlay is Travis Kelsey of the Chiefs. May you ever heard of him? 90 plus receiving yards and an anytime touchdown score, plus 262 on, on these two legs combined. Now Kelsey has had two straight bad stat weeks before the bye week. Coming off the bye though, I think they're going to feed him against a very vulnerable Eagle secondary. They're, they're playing, you know, at home in, in Arrowhead where, where we know the Mahomes to Kelsey connection is, you know, off the charts. And there's a reason why Travis Kelsey is even odds for a touchdown. And, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's obviously Patrick Mahomes' favorite red zone target. And look, 
let's just feed into the narrative a little bit. We, we all know the camera loves her. Taylor Swift will be in attendance for this game. So do you think, you know, there, there could be a little extra added motivation for a, for a big statistical game from Travis Kelsey? I do. I, I you know, in, in, the, in the Kelsey Bowl, because his brother's on the other side of the game, uh, I definitely think Travis Kelsey is going to show out and, and show up in a big way for us. And that will, that will conclude this parlay. You can see on the screen, plus... 11,428 odds. $10 pays out $1,152.83. Austin, I absolutely love what we cooked up this week. I agree with you. I'm going to throw both of our parlays over our face. You couldn't have gone the whole Kelsey analysis without saying something. But Taylor Swift, I, I love it. <laughs> but wait, they, they'll probably bring up the stats of when she's in attendance and when she isn't. So I think that's a certified winner. Those are our two parlays of the week. As always, let us know your favorite picks down below. And I did not mention, but we have two other NFL videos. I'll put them right over Logan's face. You can go check them out. We have one for our favorite bets, with uh, best bets with two one and a half unit plays. We'll have another one posted at 12 p.m. noon on Saturday that you can go check out with three more player props we love for Saturday or Sunday's NFL slate. Let's have a wonderful day. Let's cash these parlays and we'll see you guys once again, hopefully next week, maybe a Thanksgiving edition of a long shot parlay. Who knows? It's always fun and we'll have some fun with it, but we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.